This video is the first in a short sequence on the singular value decomposition. This is one of the most important results in the geometry of linear algebra. What it says in short is that any matrix A can be decomposed into a unitary matrix, a diagonal matrix, and another unitary matrix. The way we interpret this is that A as a function can be interpreted as a rotation, and then a stretch, and then another rotation. All right, let's get started. First, I'm going to prove that such a decomposition is in fact reasonable. The proof is very simple based on an exercise that you did last week. So last week you showed that suppose you have a matrix, let's call it S, which is self-adjoint or Hermitian. Then we know that S has real eigenvalues and um, it's diagonalizable. using those eigenvalues. So, if I have a matrix A, I can consider A star A and call that S. Now, it's easy to check that A star A is itself self-adjoint. Because after all, because of the order flip that happens when you adjoint a matrix, a product of matrices, So for any matrix A, A star A is self-adjoint. That means that there is some basis of vectors, V, such that SV is DV, where D is diagonal, containing the eigenvalues, and V is the eigenvectors. And actually, another thing we know from the decomposition of a Hermitian self-adjoint matrix is it's diagonalizable with an orthogonal matrix or unitary matrix. That was the spectral theorem from last time. So the spectral theorem tells us that SV is DV where V is unitary. So V star is V inverse. Now what we're going to you to do is use D and V to construct the U sigma and V star we need to take this the singular value decomposition of A. So here's our situation. We have A star A V equals DV. Now here's something to verify. Here's a lemma. Remember that D is, is a diagonal matrix with real entries in the diagonal. The lemma is that the eigenvalues of A star A are always non-negative. So not only are they real, but they're either zero or positive. I'll leave that lemma to you. If you look carefully at your proof that symmetric matrices have real eigenvalues, then you can think about A star A and what its eigenvalues look like. So look at some eigenvalue problems for A star A um, with respect to the, the uh, Hermitian inner product to examine this lemma. In any case, this means we can do something fairly interesting. Let vi denote the ith column of v. And let's let wi be a times vi. So we have a basis of vectors vi. And we're going to map each of those through the, the matrix A and have its output be wi. What I want to do is I want to compare what the W's 
look like? We know that the VIs are all perpendicular. They're all orthogonal. And in fact, they're all length one um, because V after all was a unitary matrix. So WI, we want to understand how those behave. Okay, so let's take two of the Ws and consider their Hermitian inner product. So WI um, inner product with WJ. Of course, for matrices, what I really mean here is WI star WJ. Just thinking of this as a row and that's a column. And this is, using matrix notation, VI star A star A VJ. So for each pair of indices i and j, I get this number. Well, what is that number? If you consider this, after all, vi and vj are the ith and jth columns of the matrix v. So this is simply v star a v, uh, sorry, v star a star a v, and take the i jth entry. All the interior sums are interior to this as well. Now this, because V is the eigen, uh, is the matrix of eigenvectors for A star A, which I previously called S. This is merely Dij, our diagonal matrix. So we have two possible answers. If I is not equal to J, we simply get zero, because this is a diagonal matrix. If I equals J, we pick up that diagonal entry, Dii. So this tells us something quite interesting. First of all, wi and wj are perpendicular. They're orthogonal um, if i is not equal to j. So that tells me that the set wi, these, these different vectors, w1 through wn, say, uh, form an orthogonal set. And also, we happen to know their lengths. So the length of each wi is not necessarily one, so they're not necessarily orthonormal or unitary, but they are orthogonal, so each pair of them is perpendicular. But I do know the length, so wi squared is, of course, uh, wi star wi, because the length squared is the inner product of a vector with itself. So this is simply dii, and that tells me that wi in length is the square root of dii. This would be nonsense, except that we already established in the lemma that hopefully you spent a moment to prove that, D, that the eigenvalues of a star a are necessarily non-negative real numbers. So since they're non-negative real numbers, the square root is a sensible thing. It's always a, um, a, a non-negative real number. Okay, where does that leave us? Well, we have a v equals w overall, where v is unitary. And w, it's not quite unitary, but the columns are all, per are all orthogonal, and we know the length of each column. So in fact, I can think of w as being some matrix, let's call it a unitary matrix, um, let's say u, times some scaling factor that we'll call sigma. So sigma is a diagonal matrix where sigma i i is a number that we'll call sigma i, and that is the square root of di i. So what we're going to do is we're going to say that uh, I've got this orthogonal set of vectors, I can obtain an orthog any orthogonal set by taking a unitary set and then scaling each one of them. So for example, if here's a very simple example, right? Suppose w, uh, suppose u looks like uh, 1 half square root of 3 over 2, negative square root of 3 over 2, 1 half. That could be u. And suppose that, that sigma is uh, 5, 0, 0, 7. Then we're saying that w is five times the first column, 
and 7 times the second column. So this set of vectors is orthogonal, but not uh, doesn't always have norm 1, but we can obtain it by taking an orth uh, a unitary set or an orthogonal orthonormal set of vectors and then rescaling them individually. So if we look at this equation, we now have exactly what we were looking for. A is u sigma. I have to invert v, but v after all is a unitary matrix, so I have v star. So u is unitary, sigma is diagonal. In fact, it's even better, it's diagonal and non-negative. And uh, this is also unitary. So these are in un. If A is an n by n matrix, un, un, and this is diagonal, non-negative, and real. It's a very strong condition. I just said that let's take A to be an n by n matrix, so I could write un and un, but if you look carefully at this proof, you'll notice actually that A does not have to be square for this to make sense, because A star A itself is square, and that allows A to be any size. So A could be m by n, in which case u would be m by, uh, m by m, v would be n by n, and sigma would be a rectangular matrix of size m by n, um, which essentially blocks out the the component of the of the either the the kernel the um, domain or the codomain as appropriate. 